Good morning. Thank, thank, you, thank you for making. If, if your journey was any, anything like mine, it was quite interesting this morning, wasn't it? I mean, tube lines being cancelled and people asking to vote in and out in the tube. I, I've never seen that, by the way. It's quite, quite, quite fascinating. So, um, initially when I saw the slot, I wanted to do this a more of a workshop style uh, you know, session, but 30 minutes probably wouldn't give us that time. But I would like to keep it open if, if it's possible. Um, what, what, you'll, what you'll see in this session is I've tried to slice into three sections. Probably the third section is you are most interested in about is what we are doing in record in terms of the digital, in terms of the enterprise architecture. I think that's what probably is, is more, most interest for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a story to give you the insights into what's happening with record as a business because I think that has to underpin what we're doing on the digital journey, right? So even if there's a slide, trust me, there's a message behind the slide. So, so, so that, that's what I try to do. Now, I've tried to nick three to four slides from the classic uh, marketing research materials just to set the context of what industry we are, we are working in, what's the impact of digital. Now, by, by no means I'm going to go or every stat in that slide. Probably, you know, I can share that afterwards. But that just to save the scene, what's from the industry. And finally, I'll try to explain w where we are developing our thinking from, which probably is most interesting. I'll see if I can squeeze this all in 20 minutes so that we can have 10 minutes of interaction. Does it work? Uh, very quickly, introduction about me, um, probably 17, 18 years now in the industry. I've played enterprise architecture roles in different shapes and forms. Now I'm a CTO with Reckitt. Um, before that, I was with Deutsche Bank, uh, Argos, uh, CETA, Fujitsu, different roles. Um, my particular interest is building EA practices and then embedding them in different programs. So whether it's a digital program in, in, in record, it was a, a financial transformation, Deutsche Bank, and so on and so forth. So I'll try to bring some of that insight if, 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 that, if that makes sense. Who knows about record? It's good. Because when, when people say RB, record, record in, in contrast to Unilever, where you see adverts from Unilever, at the end of advert, the Unilever flag comes in from the sort of top left. Racket never does that, because what we believe is we put our brands uh, ahead of the corporate entity. So you'll never actually find out what the brands do. But roughly speaking, what we are is we are a portfolio business. Now, how, how many of you actually come from a portfolio business background? I mean, who, who, I, I, I probably don't know all of you here, but so the portfolios and how, how that works. It was a bit of a new thing for me to learn, and that's my point number one, is the business, the way it's structured, influences your thinking. Um, so in terms of thinking about EA and a journey we are getting on, how my business is structured is basically the starting point. Portfolio business is entirely different than not portfolio business, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, roughly speaking, these are the brands, so I'll, 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 co I'll come in a minute about what, what, what do we do in which market and so on and so forth. Probably you have seen most of these brands, most of them are available on high streets. Some of them are quite strong regional brands, uh, pro pro um, pro probably things like um, uh, you know, some of the mustard sauces, which are actually probably available in the UK, but more popular in the US. Uh, but in terms of your health, your Neurofens, uh, Strepsils, Gaviscon, pretty popular. In terms of hygiene, Dettol, Lysol, Finish, Silid Bank, Wheat, uh, Home, Airwick, Vanish, Calgon. So fairly well-known family brands. And again, in terms of portfolio thinking, where we come from at Reckitt is we don't push Reckitt as a brand, we push these as brands. Which actually interesting is, is one more interesting point which I'll raise in a minute when, when I actually start talking about the matrix. So I, I almost drew the picture of matrix, but I realized I wouldn't have much time to pick up all the slides. So in Reckitt, what we deal with, going back to my point of portfolio, is we almost have a matrix of brands on this side and then the countries and geographies on this side. So coming from the CTO enterprise architect point of view, it was fairly essential more for me to understand in the first two to three months is that's how the market works, that's how the industry works, and that's how we in Reckitt actually work in response. So for example, you'll see the stats, I won't go through all of them, um, but Mucinex, for example, is, is number one, Durex is number one, Gaviscon is leading in some markets, Strepsils is number one, Wheat number one, then there is a combination of Harpic with Lysol, Silibank with Lysol, and it's quite fascinating, I think, for me as an enterprise architect, for me to understand these dynamics is so important because that's where the money is. You know, as, as most of you must have, you know, followed this principle in, in, in your career is that follow the money, right? And you actually, as an enterprise architect CTO, you actually follow where the biggest investment is. And where do you find that 
the way I find it in, for me is from the matrix which I actually laid out. So what we have are pretty two strong drivers. The first is a brand. So almost they are run as the kingdom. So brand as a kingdom. And then the geography. So Dettol in India is altogether different proposition than Dettol in UK. I know that because I was born, born in India. So I know that Dettol is very, very strong in India. And that brand there in that market is a different ball game. And the way you would actually go about spending your investment dollar, technology dollar, marketing dollar is different than the way you do it actually in the UK, if that makes sense. Right? Um, the other point which I wanted to bring, uh, which underpins the whole EA thinking and a journey which, which we are embarking on, is um, the distributed nature and the sheer volume. You, you cannot, most of you may have come from technology background, I have come from, some of you may not have. But one thing which probably will agree with me, you cannot underestimate the sheer complex in operations and the scale and size which comes with running operations in multiple countries. And some of the brands, their presence, some of the systems for the likes of Durex and Airwick, I mean, it's unparalleled. And the kind of investment profiles which we are underpinning in enterprise architecture behind that are probably different than something like a, a clear sale or you know, something like a French. Where actually, well, with all respect, we will we'll stand behind it but they will not feature on that upper matrix of investment profiles, which unfortunately I couldn't share with you because of obvious reasons. Um, I couldn't get the latest chart for December 15, but this tells you the story. And the message behind this is it's brutally commercially focused business. What does this mean for me from an EA point of view? I cannot sell a framework for its purity or for its stands for. I could not sell a Zachman or a Togaf in RB. They will throw me out. They don't care. What they absolutely care about is any proposal, any roadmap, any investments we're pushing for is underpinning this very, very brutal growth. If it's not bringing in money, it's not going to fly. And I, I, don't, I personally don't think it's going to be much different from many of your businesses. I think the businesses are changing. So I don't think we are, in that sense, very different. Most of the businesses are now getting strategic. But if I compare and contrast my previous roles, whether it's Deutsche Bank or Argos or Fujitsu, I've never seen this ruthless streak in terms of numbers which come from CPG. I don't know how many of you are from CPG here. But this a completely ruthless streak, I have never seen. So I think that underpins EA. I cannot underpin an EA model or roadmap without having this kind of consideration. So that's one more context for me. The next two charts are about showing the sort of length and breadth which kind of points to the whole distributed nature of the business. I think you kind of get the picture so we don't have to overlap that point. So let, let me switch to the next topic, which, which I wanted to build as, as a story, which is the whole digital disruption. I mean, how many of you actually are impacted by digital in a room? Show of hands? Which, which is quite consistent with what we have seen here. So what the charts, this is the research, which is a very interesting piece of work from um, Harvard Business Review, which, I, which if you haven't seen, I, I can send you a link. Well, what they did was they basically did a poll of the top execs and marketing communities across the, the whatever, Fortune 500. And then they found out what's the impact of next 12 months in your industry, how much you will be impacted by the digital trends. So I sort of put myself right here, but then I also put myself right here because we actually do a lot of work with Walmart and Tesco's of this world, right? So we are impacted by the trends coming from them. Um, what this means is um, this, will, this will actually detect how much uh, impact on your investment dollar signs, which actually digital trend is making. For me, and again, I couldn't present that chart because of confidential reasons, but for me, directly, we have been given a number by our CEO to go and achieve by 2020 to underpin the digital channels. So, so in other words, as an enterprise architect, I cannot actually put obstacles or slow anything down because they're not doing, doing the right technology uh, because of some other reasons. But if they actually are directly linked to the growth in digital space, they will go and do their own thing. In other words, the digital guys can do whatever they want. You know, but you know, you have to sort of balance it out with um, some of the things which I will actually talk about in a minute. Um, which is also interesting in terms of what exactly do you do with digital, right? I mean, there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of noise about digital. So it's like everyone wants to do cloud five years back. What is cloud? No one knew, right? So everyone wants to now do digital. Well, what does digital mean? I don't know about what you feel, but you know, I looked at some of the research. This is from a very good research published by Adobe. Um, I think fairly recent, actually, 2016. Um, and, and these are some of the trends they have talked about, right? So, um, you know, targeting personalization, content, social media, multi-channel, brand building. 
for me, um, some of the biggest is basically the content optimization, targeting, multi-channel, and, and really pushing that on the metrics which I talked about before of the brands and the markets. I think that's where we start to get the digital drivers. And going back to my point of digital boys can do whatever they want, I think that's where what we have found out is finding the specifics about what exactly do you want to do. If it's big data, if it's digital, kind of bringing it back and tying to the building blocks which we have in the enterprise, which I'll come to in a minute, I think that's something which has helped us in, in terms of the journey. Um, finally, and this is again interesting research from McKinsey coming very, very recently, which again, if you haven't seen, I'll, I'll send you a copy of this. Um, or a link to it. Um, so, so, what, what, so this looks at a slightly different angle, saying digital is fine, but what does it matter to your colleagues? So if you're a CIO or a CTO, your peers, whether it's a CFO, whether it's a HR director, whether it's a sales marketing director, what do they, what do they actually expect from you? And it's funny because, uh, look, look at this one. So we, I mean, coming from a technology company, CIO or CTO offices, we think that reducing cost is still very, very important. Well, funny enough, this is what the digital boys actually have, are, are saying to us, actually it doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter for them. For them, fail fast, do it more often. It doesn't matter if you go get it wrong. So they're looking at it from a different angle. And even if I'm the CTO enterprise architect sitting in the CIO team, I have to kind of balance the act because my CEO is, uh, CIO is saying, well, we can't really be spending on stuff. But I'm saying that actually the digital guys are spending it. So how do you balance it, right? So that, that's one more thing which is driving the thinking. And finally, uh, this, is, this is my favorite uh, author at the moment, I mean, uh, Don Hinchcliffe. I, he does some really cool uh, publishing. So again, if you haven't followed, just please, please follow him. He's a very, very good guy. So this is a flood of new technologies, right? I mean, I don't need to tell this to you. I mean, you, you must have seen half of them yourselves now. But it's coming at us. I mean, we are, we are seeing just step down for a coffee. You will see at least half of them are selling new technology and new trends. Well, it's, 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 it's the industry we are in is going to change. So how do, you, how do you keep on top of it? How, how do you actually balance that? So that's one more driver, which is, which is kind of pushing the thinking in, in the EA community in RB. Okay? So to, to sum it up, what are we doing for time? To, to sum it up, the, the major challenges for me are uh, diverse portfolio, whether it's you know, distributed business with local, speed of execution, you saw the, the numbers chart. We cannot push academic models. It's to be really spot on in terms of delivery. Common tech standards, tech governance, we still need to keep on doing innovation and uh, investment planning, which is basically for shared platforms across bands. And finally, more importantly for me, where I started with absolutely no capability for architecture is to building that capability as a team, right? Now I've got only two slides, and this is what probably you're expecting. So let me spend some time on this. So what we have been doing in the journey since the past sort of one year is framing all those things and bringing them together. And if you look at the, the framework which now we are actually underpinning with everything we are doing in record, will look something like this. So let me explain that in a minute. Um, I slice it in basically three layers. Uh, so on top you have the front office, which is the classic digital front, front page customer facing sort of um, uh, entities. In the, back, in the back end, we've got all the back office. So we have actually got, you know, JD Edwards for our master transactions. We are ruling out SAP. We've got Siebel and so on and so forth. And what I call the middleware are the enablers. So the way we are actually pushing the planning and investment cycles are in these buckets. So very, 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 very quickly, uh, we're building the foundation based on all the legacy and all the back office applications and renewal of that. So whether it's modernization, whether it's linking with web services, whether they're actually look, looking on APIs and whatever it is, uh, we are bringing in your data lakes and actually pushing for the big data solutions in Hadoop in terms of how actually you're pushing the, the data from legacy. Uh, the way we are tackling the batch transaction nature is we are actually putting some CDC and adopters to kind of make it real time and start absorbing in, in, in the front end. Um, and for addressing tech standards, uh, basically, I've, I've launched a TRB, which is my governance framework, governance process, which actually runs on a monthly basis and we do review on, on a ongoing basis, right? In terms of enablers, what we have done uh, now so far in the journey is uh, we are introducing a, a, a tool uh, a tool set rather than one, one, one tool, it's kind of tool set of middlewares. So we are going on a sort of API journey with MuleSoft um, at the moment. Um, 
we are pushing for a common data model, and as I said, we are building a common data lake, um, you know, on, on the big data technologies. Um, for the for attacking the the batch, basically, the, this this means the the CDC, the so change data capture technologies which we are rolling out. And in terms of capabilities, the way we are tackling that is we are actually building a team of architects who are distributed. Now, if I had more time, probably I could actually share a bit more insight into that. I'm happy to capture offline. But in terms of what we're doing for the capabilities is we are actually looking for an embedded team of architects where some of the, the, the team members from my team will actually be with digital boys to kind of start influencing their thinking. And finally, what does is what is this sort of digital thinking in, means to, to me in terms of our investment going forward is um, we are basically slashing them into four sort of diverse areas. The first is digital applications. So whether it's SaaS, uh, whether it's you know, your cloud providers coming in, uh, we, we start working with them, whether it's your Salesforce platforms which we're building. Um, you know, in terms of the, the front office, all the sales systems which are rolling out, again, based on SaaS products, we are bringing, bringing that in and tying that, up, tying that up. Number of cloud applications are coming in, so we are actually rolling out a collaboration with Office 65 and UX, which is a big growth area for us. So we are actually pushing out a number of reporting platforms. So uh, the challenge for us internally has been to, to, to tie those threads which you saw from brands, from investments, from markets, uh, from the number of challenges which we saw in the previous thing, and then actually linking that to the investments for all of these 12 things. Um, and my final slide for, for, for the day is the framework which sort of underpins that um, is, is this. So, so what we are doing is uh, we have sliced into probably four different ways of doing that. So top, top most, where I spent most of my time in the beginning was, was pushing the strategy and, and developing the roadmap. So roadmap for digital, roadmap for front office, roadmap for middle office, back office. How does that link in terms of the investment cases, in terms of the benefits and value conversations with the CFO and, and the likes? The, the next thing which my team is focusing on is actually doing solution architecture. So the, even though we are coming from an EA angle, uh, what is fairly clear is that in a company like Reckitt, EA is not going to fly. So what does this mean in terms of solutions, right? If someone wants to launch a SaaS product tomorrow, they want to launch a data stream for the reporting in the markets tomorrow, what does that mean? So most of my guys, including me, will be solution architects in some, some time and start pushing that in terms of consulting basis. We are also doing lots of POCs and pilots with the likes of, you know, the well-known brands or upcoming entities. The governance, it's, it's, it's boring, but someone has to do it. So I think in terms of the TRB and regular checkpoints, that's something which we are sort of now turning the handle on that. But it was a big challenge for a company which hasn't had this to kind of do it. So clearly, you can't progress without that. But that's sort of in place. And finally, the, the biggest challenge for us is with the distributed nature and the sort of brand kingdoms, how do you start pushing for a global capability organization in terms of common practices, common language, people using common tools? And that's a big, big, long journey for us. I wouldn't even claim that we are making any progress. What we are doing is, through internal social media, through internal comms, we are pushing some common stuff on Yammer. We are building virtual communities. Uh, we are doing hackathons and kind of getting people excited. We are doing job swaps and, and stuff like that. So that's sort of, in a nutshell, uh, how we are progressing. If I had more time, probably I could show more, more, more things to you. I don't know if I've got a few minutes for QAs or any questions. Thanks very much, Amit. Um, so, any questions, um, comments about that? <laughs> Hi. Um, I, I guess with the nature of CPG, uh, a lot of the brands you're you're buying and selling quite a lot of the time. How how do you build the architecture to be able to support the kind of merger and acquisition and divestment aspects of that? So, so, what we are, so that's, that's a great question. So what, what we are doing now is before, the architecture before, and I wish again if I had time I could show you the as and to be pictures. The architecture before would mean that people would actually put links directly into my back office. So for all your sales, transactions, manufacturing, all the marketing links, all the sales purchase links, they will go directly into back end. What we're doing to kind of smoothen and so kind of accelerate that pace of m a is we are building the set of enablers. So enablers in terms of API, exposing my back office APIs, exposing them as data services so that you don't really actually have to touch on the back end, uh, pushing that uh, as a sort of real-time transactions and building capabilities in terms of standards and actually interoperable standards between the different products. 
Doing that, I'm finding it, it just in past one year that transaction uh, speed has actually increased by 20% straight away, if not more. Uh, and and, the, and it's, it's easy, it's not rocket science. And instead of going and building 1,000 interfaces, you're actually kind of going and using the APIs which I publish. So on, on a roadmap, probably I would be pushing roughly 400 APIs by next year. And that should just help accelerate that, uh, that, that transaction. Even, even divestment, because what happens in terms of divestment is that my data sets, yes, they will, they will become part of the core data sets, but in terms of the access and how different brands and different geographies are accessing that, they are now isolated through the, through the middleware. So I, I don't have to go and actually fix those things here. What I do is actually I either turn it on or turn it off. There is still the issue, by the way, there's still grunt work of actually taking the data sets physically out. I'm not saying that's going to go away, but that just helps. But for me, I think for me, what matters more is introduction of a brand in a market. I think that probably is the equivalent of MNA for me because even that's e equally painful, right? How do you push for new marketing campaign, new Facebook campaign? How do you actually push the data sets? And that's where I think the, the sort of um, the ease is coming through this sort of framework. What are the KPIs that you're, you're putting in place by which you're going to measure success? Yeah, so uh, it's, it's, usual, it's usual suspects. Uh, so in terms of um, you know, investment profiles, we have actually the sort of investment profile working with the CFO's team, uh, the return on investment, the investment profiles, all the financial metrics, that basically has the first thing. The second thing which we are actually now measuring is the level of services a product and a brand is exposing itself. And that's, that's new because going back to my chart, there was a reason for showing that is because the, thing, the thinking is I'm, I'm big, I'm a big brand in a big market. Why do I need to share? Right? From that we are moving towards a, a sort of a, a digital API based thinking and we are kind of judging them based on how many APIs they're exposing. Now I'm not saying we're winning, that's a long, long journey, but that's what we're actually finding. How many services you're sharing? Third thing we are judging on is how many data services they're exposing. So uh, if a brand wants tomorrow to push a campaign on, a, on your iPhone or on your, you know, whatever device you're on, uh, for you to kind of buy things uh, in a click, which we don't do today in most markets. Today, if you have to do it, tomorrow if you have to do it, then you have to kind of switch on the data services, which actually allow you to find out the stocks, the pricing, the availability, the benchmarks, the reviews. If you don't publish that, guess what? We are locked into third parties like Amazon. So we actually sell a lot of stuff through Amazon, but uh, we are locked in. We would like you to come to rb.com. We can't do it today. So that, that's, one, that's one more major in terms of how we are going to change. Um, coming from a, a, a big data vendor, I'm just interested to see, I, mean, I guess the scale of your business, it must be huge in terms of volume and variety of data yeah. and how much pressure the business is putting you know, IT on to be able to really get, you know, the right insights um, mm. and the right reporting and to make mm. sure it's meaningful because mm. it just seems like you've got, wow, a whole world of stuff Absolutely. out there. <laughs> Absolutely. It's spot on. And that's where this framework is so useful for us. If you see on the top end, in addition to the digital cloud and SaaS, I've also put the diverse reporting and UX. Actually, if, if, you, if you put yourself in the shoes of the regional marketing manager in Dubai or someone sitting and doing the role in Shanghai, actually, from their point of view, they really don't care what is this JD Edwards or SAP or Siebel or whatever, right? They also don't care if it's a Salesforce. They really don't know. I mean, they're the buzzwords for them. What matters to them is what actually they get here more and more because that's where they're getting all the news feeds, the data, probably their kids' schools reports now coming on this one. So the challenge for us is actually managing this. Um, so that's, that's, that's the front part of it. Now, before we embarked on the journey, this was the end-to-end -end outlet for all the dozens of, you know, probably four dozens of applications we bought. So if you're a marketing manager in, in Dubai, you probably have got six dashboards coming from six solutions. Now where we're going is we are now replacing that slowly through the data service and app service we're pushing and generating that through whether it's a big data or visual solutions, which actually crunching the data for them. And slowly we're going to get them off that sugar diet to how they should be getting it on. Uh, but but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, I mean, it's, it's a big challenge because for us, the problem is data is distributed. You know, I mean, the Walmart usage profile is distributed. Uh, Tesco usage profile is distributed. 
Carrefour uh, is probably distributed, and how do you get that from the local instance to global? Uh, that's one of the biggest things. Right now, the way we are tackling it is we are isolating that to data sources. And data sources go to your dashboards, and then you start to then dealing and get to probably the big data or, 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 or lake, whatever you have in that sense. But probably, again, so one and a half, two years journey going forward. I have a couple of quick questions, actually. So um, I totally appreciate your digital strategy um, focus on the revenue side of your business. Um, but in some regards, um, digital strategies are also digitizing businesses and getting yes. rid of paper. Yes. So are you looking at that? Um, and second observation with all of this is, um, as you move to a digital world, um, are you thinking security as you as you build up these new API links, um, external and internal yes. applications. Yes. So spot on. I, I think. I think. And let me start with the second one first because that's straightforward. So we actually absolutely are putting the security at the heart of it. We have just hired um, a, a very influential senior CI so to come in and join the business just a few months back uh, from WPP. So I think that's at the heart of it. Um, it's fair to say that that thinking is not embedded in business because in the classic CPG, people just do stuff, right? They don't worry about well, what's, what's behind. It just it looks nice. So yes, so, so going forward, that will be underpinning that. To your point of actually the priority of digital, going back to the chart from the Adobe which I shared, for us, number one target is revenue. And number two target is profit. And probably number three is, again, uh, ranking or how the customer sats come through different websites. So the focus right now is actually digitizing the channel to market. And, and giving more channels to our marketeers to, set, to, to, to showcase and sell. We are unique in that sense. That's a good point, actually. You're unique in that sense that we are also manufacturers of our own goods. We are not, we are not, we are not consumers of wide label goods. So what we actually do is we actually manufacture our own soaps and candles and fragrance and essences. That is the challenge. In terms of digitizing, what we're doing at the moment is we are actually embarking on a fairly um, ambitious SAP program to kind of take factories and rolling it out in that sense. Uh, but in terms of removal of paper and actually getting to that stage, automating supply chain, which is what I did in Argos, I don't think we are focusing that much on that at the moment. But to, to, to some extent, what this chart is showing is this thinking and doing that here is really not going to work it, unless you start thinking about this. The problem for me, if I'm very honest, uh, is, is there anyone from SAP or IBM or Oracle in the room? Then I can speak freely. The problem for me is, most, most of my applications are locked in with the big vendors because of historical decisions. And no matter what marketing BS you get in these conferences, the vendors are not ready to give, the, give that to us. And that's the biggest problem. It is a big problem for me to start taking the data from the enterprise systems and start exposing them as services. That's a very, very big problem. And vendors are not helping. I've got to say this. Traditional vendors are not very helpful. You need to buy more to, to get those things. But I'm saying, well, actually, I've already invested so much. Why can't I do it? You can't do it. Hi. Uh, I have a question. I'm based on certain assumptions, so correct me if my assumptions are not uh, right. You said you would lot people to come to rb.com instead of going to other digital yes, commerce. Yes, yes. So I, I also assume you do not have direct customer or consumer as your customers. So consider. Okay, this is my assumption. Yeah. So considering if you want to move to that uh, side of going and, and interacting directly with the consumer, what do you think are the three most important or challenges you have? And what would be your three criteria to manage or major success if you move forward? That, that's, that's, that's a great question. So the way we differentiate in RB is we differentiate between customer and consumer. I, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't understand that when I joined the business. So, so consumer is yourselves buying Gaviscon or, or you know, purchasing data or whatever. Customer is a Tesco or a Walmart or actually Amazon too, if, if Amazon is selling it. That is, Amazon is more of a broker for us. Um, so going back to your assumption, that assumption is true in most of the markets. In some markets like China, we are actually selling direct now. So one of the biggest challenge for us to expand that ambitious 2020 target is to move from their channels to our channels. To do that, my, 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 my views are not very, very different from all thousands of you know, people uh, sort of giving their views. In terms of ranking, I would probably say number one is targeting personalization. 
I do not know who you are today. That's my biggest problem. You might be buying a, a case of some product every other month, and you might be the most high rated sort of whatever. I don't know who you are because you actually buy through Amazon or Tesco. You are their customer, you're not my customer. I think the content optimization is the biggest one for me because you can imagine with the huge portfolios we have, the content, the, the damn, the digital asset management is a big challenge for us. Most of that, before we started doing that, was outsourced to third party agencies. I know how, how many of you actually work with marketing agencies and it's, it's really a different world, isn't it? I mean, it's like very, very different world. Um, it's all distributed. So for me, to, to do that in a much more uh, optimized fashion, that's number two. And probably, I think, uh, you know, in terms of brand building and viral marketing, the amount of dollars spent we have on Facebook and Google is absolutely astonishing. I was really shocked. I can't reveal the numbers. Really shocking amount of money which we are spending through these channels. If you can start doing that to our own channels, I think that probably will be number three for me, where, where I stand. Okay, well, thanks very much indeed, Amit. I'd uh, like you to join me in thanking Amit for a very interesting presentation. And um, I think a very impressive gro growth record over the last it 10 is. years. It is. Yeah. So my, my apologies. Uh, I've been pushing at a probably uh, qu quite a high speed, but hopefully I wanted to get you as much as information as possible. If, if there's more question, I'm more happy to take offline. Thanks very much indeed.